The views and opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily those of Union Broadcasting, Inc., ESPN 1510, or its employees. The host is solely responsible for the on-air content. The views expressed in this program are for informational purposes only and do not constitute investment advice. Investing in ETFs involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any past performance figures discussed are not necessarily indicative of future results. Visit ETFstore.com for more information. Now it's time for the ETF Store Show. The investment pros at the ETF Store discuss everything you need to know about exchange-traded funds and the world of investing. Whether you're an investing expert or just starting out, Nate and Jason will help you get up to date on what's happening on Wall Street and show you how exchange-traded funds can help lower your investment costs, reduce your tax bill, and allow you to take advantage of investment opportunities around the world. And now, the host of the ETF Store Show, Nate Geraci. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the ETF Store Show. Nate Geraci and Jason Lincoln in studio. Thanks for tuning in this morning. And as always, if you have questions on anything that we discuss on today's show, or if you would like more information about investing in ETFs, you can call an ETF store investment advisor today at 877-365-ETFs. That's 877-365-3837. Or you can visit us online at etfstore.com. Now, as some longtime listeners may know, uh, I happen to be a pretty avid sports fan. Uh, playing sports, watching sports, reading about sports, you name it, I like my sports. And of course, my other big passion is investing. I follow the markets, uh, it seems like, since I could walk. So when I heard about a company called Fantex and what they were doing, for me, this was the perfect marriage of two of my favorite passions. Fantex offers investors the ability to buy tracking stock linked to the future earnings of professional athletes. On today's show, we're actually going to be joined by the CEO and co-founder of Fantex, Buck French. We're going to learn exactly how these securities work. And I also see some real similarities between what Fantex is doing in ETF. So we're going to discuss that as well. As always, later in the show, we'll have our weekly market update and ETF spotlight. And if you have questions or comments for us today, you can find us on Twitter. Just look for at ETF store. Or you can go to ETFstore.com. Uh, so, Jason, we are in the dog days of summer here. And since we always take ourselves so seriously on this show, you, you know, I thought it might be fun to sort of lighten things up today and cover what I think is just a fascinating concept in Fantex. And let me be clear, Fantex takes these securities they offer uh, very seriously. These are real SEC registered tracking stocks. Uh, but, you know, I simply couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk about investing and sports on the same show. This is going to be a great show and a lot of fun. I look forward to having our guest on. You know, in our office, not just you, Nate, you know, all the advisors in our office are huge sports fans from different schools. And, you know, the thing we butt heads out about uh, against each other, the only thing more than, than, in, than sports is probably investing. So we're really looking forward to this. You and I had an opportunity to, to, to visit briefly in your office before the show and talk. It just bounced some ideas about what are these guys doing? Is, this, is, this is true innovation. It's, every so often you see something come by that says, that is interesting. May, may not be right for you or me, but that is a great concept. You know, what kind of athletes are involved? You know, how, are they tagging on to the whole boom in fantasy sports and the interest in athletes and you know, everybody wants to be their own general manager and put together a team. And who hasn't filled out a, a bracket of 64 for the NCAA tourney? You know, they've really hit something interesting here. Well, and of course, we pride ourselves on being a thought leader in the field of investing. If there's a new investment product or new investment approach, we do like to try to understand it. Uh, you know, this one just happens to be in an area that we also find very entertaining. But think back 20 years ago. Most people primarily invested uh, in just stocks and bonds, and that was it. Now here we are 20 years later, and we'll talk about this in a moment with ETFs. There are ways to invest in just about anything. And with Fantex, you can now even invest in professional athletes. But Jason, the other interesting thing when you look at Fantex is it really does offer some great lessons in how capital markets work and how stock is issued. It, it is. It's, it's a perfect marriage between two industries and and the the combination of the two it, it's going to need to need to talk with buck but you know I, I, the innovation part of fantex i think is really we're talking about you know we compare it to our industry and you know 20 30 years ago how did the investor participate in gold or commodities or oil you know think back 
in the day, if you wanted exposure to gold, you know, there was physical gold. You had to go buy it and store it or put it in a safe deposit box and insure it. You know, today, ETFs have allowed the individual investor to purchase not only gold, but many precious metals on an exchange-traded basis. You know, think oil. You know, oil's in the headlines every day, and we, we all think about the price of oil every time we fill up our car. But 20 or 30 years ago, how would you participate in the, the, the rise of price of oil? Well, there's no physical oil unless you're going to bury barrels of oil in your backyard. You know, you had to have a futures brokerage contract. And that's well beyond the acumen of most investors. So ETFs have really allowed that space to come alive. And I'll leave you with one interesting idea. And this, this is something I read about just yesterday. For our lady listeners, there is now a women in leadership exchange traded note. That's right. There is some thought that executives, female executives of corporations are pretty darn effective. And there's a way to participate in that thesis if that's something you're interested in. So the key word here is change and innovation. Well, that's really one of the reasons why I wanted to have Fantex on the show today is I did see some real similarities between what Fantex is doing in ETFs. And if you think about it, Fantex is offering the ability to invest in something that before wasn't accessible to investors. And again, we're going to talk to Fantex CEO and co-founder Buck French here in just a moment. But what Fantex does is allow you to buy tracking stock linked to the cash flows of professional athletes. So if you buy the stock of an athlete on Fantex and that athlete signs a big contract or gets a new endorsement deal, that could cause the value of the stock to go up. Uh, or if they get injured or retire, perhaps the stock goes down. This is really a very innovative concept. And I should note that this isn't just some fly-by-night company. Jason, if you look at the Fantex board of directors, there are a few names that might ring a bell with you. Uh, John Elway, Quarter- NFL Hall of Fame quarterback, Jack Nicklaus. Have you heard of him? Oh, yeah. He's won a few majors, I think, in the in golf. Kerry Kittles, the former NBA player. So there were some very heavy hitters behind this uh, this business. But, you know, we talk about this quite frequently on the show about investments that previously weren't accessible to investors. ETFs have completely changed the game in this regard. ETFs now allow you to invest in just about any asset class or investment type that you can think of. So I, I like the innovation here from Fantex for many of the same reasons I like the innovation from ETFs. You bet. And, and uh, you know, I don't know, Nate, if in the future our firm will be recommending pro-athlete investments to our clients. But you know what? Who knows? 10 or 15 years ago, who would have thought that you could have the kind of opportunities that exchange-traded funds now offer? You know, Fantex has come along now and said, hey, here's another opportunity. What we find interesting when you and I were talking is the correlation aspect. As builders of portfolios, you and I look to what kind of things grow and do they zig when the other zags. And fan or athlete incomes presumably or perhaps have a are not correlated specifically with the stock market. And here's here's a, a simple example. You know, we can take a look at Detroit in the automotive industry and say, you know, in 10 years, will they be building cars and how many? Well, I think the answer is yes to that. How many? Nobody really knows. Well, here's another question. In 10 years, will the Dallas Cowboys still be playing football? Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe bet also. So that means there are, you know, 30, 40 highly paid athletes out there that, uh, you know, this just lends itself to this concept. Well, again, it's it's the innovation, and it's the innovation that's helping to drive the growth of ETFs, Jason. Investors want to access investments that could help diversify their portfolios. Investors no longer want cookie-cutter stock and bond portfolios, uh, nor, quite frankly, do we think that's the best way to invest. So I, I think ETFs and Fantex both have innovation in common. And then the other thing, and I don't want to get into a deep dive on the structure of ETFs or mutual funds or any other investment, but when you think about how ETFs are constructed – If you buy shares of, say, SPY, the Spider S&P 500 ETF, you're getting exposure to the S&P 500 index and the future earnings of the companies in that index. If you buy Fantex stock, you're getting exposure to the future brand-related earnings of professional athletes. And you can buy or sell shares of both ETFs and Fantex tracking stock during the day. Uh, Now, to be clear, there are some very significant differences in the structure of ETFs versus Fantex stock. But... The point is that with both, you have a real-time market to buy security that tracks an underlying asset. It's it's all about the future earnings. You know, are you buying, when you buy, a, say, a share of Google, we've all heard of Google, you are interested in participating the future earnings, the future growth of that company. Well, what they've done in the past doesn't necessarily mean what they'll do in the future, 
But that's the thesis. Well, with a professional athlete, you know, is the best yet to come? Is the next contract bigger than the last one? You know, that's where it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out with different kinds of athletes, different sports. Of course, there are different contracts, you know. Does golf differ from football? It just raises all kinds of interesting questions. Well, it's interesting because we're jumping back and forth here talking about ETFs and, and Fantex pro athlete tracking stock. Uh, here's something else to consider to sort of bring our discussion full circle this morning. Could we perhaps see an athlete ETF someday? If there are enough athletes with tracking stock, maybe someone, Jason, will launch an athlete ETF. I certainly couldn't rule it out given the innovation in the industry. And as you hit on just a few moments ago, uh, you talk about an uncorrelated asset. I'm guessing the stock of professional athletes probably isn't going to move like the stocks and bonds in your portfolio. Well, that's the whole idea. And, you know, the, the, the play would be that these athletes and as the game and the sports of football and baseball and all the majors and, and all the other opportunities for pro to, to be a professional athlete, you know, skateboarding, surfing. I mean, really, probably the sky's the limit. But as these incomes grow, potentially your investment could, too. And look at ETFs again, Jason. You talked about gold. Think about the wide range of asset classes that you can now access when you talk about oil, when you talk about commodities, agriculture, emerging markets, emerging market bonds, treasury inflation protected securities. I could probably go on for an hour or so here. And again, these were all asset classes that previously were very difficult for the everyday investor to access. So Again, when we talk about Fantex this morning, I just think it's it's a very interesting concept in that you are getting exposure to something that previously you could not access. So let's take a break, and when we come back, we will be joined by Buck French, CEO and co-founder of Fantex. This is the ETF Store Show on ESPN 1510. Hi, this is David Van Oy of the Van Oy Group at Reese & Nichols Realtors. Thanks for listening to my friends at the ETF Store. When making decisions about buying or selling a home, you need first someone who is knowledgeable and someone you can trust. With nine years of experience and over $40 million at residential sales, I would love an opportunity to apply for that job. If you would like more information on a specific home or a property evaluation in Missouri, call 536-SOLD. In Kansas, call 259-HOME or go to our website, thevanoygroup.com. Is your investment portfolio on track to meet your retirement goals? Unfortunately, most people can't answer that question. In fact, many people haven't done any retirement planning at all. Hi, I'm Nate Geraci with the ETF Store, an investment advisor located right here in Kansas City. Let us help you build a retirement plan and work to achieve your financial goals. Call us today at 816-363-3837 or visit us online at ETFstore.com. And don't forget to tune in to the ETF Store Show every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on ESPN 1510. Tired of running around town trying to find the best products for your business? Regal Distributing can help. With over 9,000 stock products and categories like food service packaging, professional facilities, office supplies, and sustainable janitorial solutions, you'll be sure to find what you need at Regal. Visit us on the web at GetRegal.com or call locally at 913-894-8787. And don't forget to check out Regal's state-of-the-art showroom and training center located off 435 and K10 Highway. Go with the local partner you can trust. Go with Regal, distributing service and solutions since 1955. Typical estate planning is transactional, focused solely on money, offering cookie-cutter documents, resulting in plans that do not address what is truly important to you and your loved ones. Bridge Builder's unique planning process focuses on the three dimensions of family wealth. Financial, what you own. Human, who you are. And intellectual, what you know. Bridge Builder, plans for life, architects at protecting and perpetuating family wealth for generations. Please contact Bridge Builder for a free consultation at 913-956-3984. For those of you who haven't heard, the oldest building in Kansas City has the newest rooftop deck. Kelly's Westport Inn's rooftop deck has a full-service bar, TVs, bathrooms, lots of fans, and an awesome view of Westport. Kelly's has a weekday happy hour Monday through Friday from 3 to 7. They also have live music every Friday and Saturday night. Come enjoy tunes from bands like Lost Wax, Flanagan's Right Hook, and Michael Beer's Band. Every city has a place where the elite gather for witty conversation over trendy cocktails. In Kansas City, that place is definitely not Kelly's. For more information, go to kellyswestportin.com. Welcome back to the ETF Store Show on ESPN 1510. Nate and Jason in studio today. We spent the first part of the show talking about innovation and investing, and certainly ETFs have changed the game for investors. There's a reason they've been called the next generation mutual funds. And when we came across Fantech's 
I, I just thought there were some real strong parallels between what Fantex is doing and what's happening with ETFs. Again, just in terms of innovation and investing. I'm now pleased to have joining us via phone the CEO and co-founder of Fantex, Buck French. Buck, thanks for joining us this morning, and welcome to the ETF Store Show. Great. Thanks for having me. Uh, Buck, before we get into how the pro-athlete tracking stocks work, where did this concept of Fantex come from? Uh, My fellow co-founder, Dave Byrne, who's the chairman of the company, uh, came up with the original idea. It really was around this concept that if you could – uh, create a b- broader brand perspective of the athlete than them just being an athlete. Potentially they could have sustainable uh, cash flows into the future. And so uh, that's kind of where it started, and uh, it led us to figuring out that the best way to create advocates for uh, the brands that we work with is to create a security that's linked to their cash flow so that now people have a financial uh, motivation to help promote the brand. And so that's kind of where uh, we decided to create Fantex.com, where people can actually go out and um, reserve shares and trade shares and uh, a security that's linked to the cash flow of a professional athlete. Okay, so explain to us exactly how this process works. Uh, let's take the Vernon Davis IPO as an example. Davis is a Pro Bowl tight end for the San Francisco 49ers. He's one of the elite players in the NFL. And you now offer a tracking stock linked to his future brand-related earnings. I- explain this to us. Yeah, so we signed a contract uh, with Vernon Davis to acquire 10% of his brand income. That's made up of his current and future NFL playing contracts, endorsements, appearance fees. Importantly, it grabs his consumer persona in his post-career. So, for example, should he become a broadcaster or radio show- talk show host, that income is included. And in exchange for that 10% right to that future cash flow stream, we paid him $4 million. Now, that contract became the basis that represents the cash flows associated with what we're acquiring from Vernon for the security that we offered via Fantex.com to the general public. So um, people went and reserved shares in, in uh, the Fantex Vernon Davis offering, and it closed on April 28th. Okay, now when you say future brand income, what exactly are we talking about here? You mentioned that it could encompass post-career earnings, things like broadcasting. Uh, what about, let's say, Vernon Davis opens up a restaurant uh, under his name. Would that be something that would be included? So if he's putting his capital up, uh, we have a co-investment right alongside uh, Vernon in that uh, restaurant that he's starting. Okay. So we, we have an option to invest alongside him if we choose. Okay, what about autograph signing appearances, public speaking fees, those sort of things? Those all would be uh, included, and we'd, uh, we'd have a right to 10% of them. Okay. And importantly, just, just and his current and future NFL playing contract. So um, uh, all of that, it's not just things he's doing off the field. It's on the field as well. Now, you mentioned Davis received $4 million for 10% of his future brand-related earnings. So his future earnings were valued today at $40 million. I'm just curious, how was that valuation determined? Yeah, so we uh, we forecasted, estimated basically that uh, Vernon on his own, without our help building his brand, had the uh, potential to earn uh, approximately $62 million between uh, his on-field and off-field uh, efforts. Um, we adjusted that for risk. Uh, the weighted average discount rate on that cash flow stream to get to $40 million was 11.4%. So... Um, we basically uh, took into account uh, the risk factors associated with generating the income stream to come up with the $40 million, but uh, our estimate was that he has the potential to earn $62 million. Okay, and these shares, they trade every day on Fantex, uh, very similar to how a, a normal stock may trade on an exchange, and they also pay dividends, correct? Correct. So we, um, we announced uh, about 30 days after we closed his IPO uh, a $0.70 cent per share dividend, which... Uh, for those of record on August 15th, we'll pay out uh, the $0.70 cent per share on August 18th, which we picked that date because it's the day after uh, the Niners play the first preseason game in their new stadium. Now explain the process of actually purchasing shares. So if we have listeners that want to purchase shares of Vernon Davis, uh, how exactly do they go about doing so? Yeah, so they go to Fantex.com, F-A-N-T-E-X.com. Uh, they go through the process of registering for a brokerage account. Fantex.com is the uh, 
FINRA member uh, broker dealer, no different than an E Trade or others, in the sense of the the regulations and everything. Um, they go through uh, set up their brokerage account takes you know maybe three to five minutes, uh, and then they can reserve shares in our current offering, which is uh, uh, Fanpix EJ Manuel, who's the starting quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, uh, first quarterback picked in the draft last year. Um, uh, he we're actually anticipating closing his IPO on Friday. Uh, that's our goal. And um, they can reserve shares or they can fund their account uh, and acquire shares and uh, attempt to acquire shares. Someone's willing to sell them in the uh, in Fantex Vernon Davis. Hey, Buck, this is Jason Lank alongside Nate in studio. You mentioned Vernon Davis and the reserving of shares. What you're talking about is the IPO process, the, the, the initial public offering. Now, in our world, when the next Google or Alibaba or corporation goes public and there's an IPO for stock, you know, the individual investor, and that's who we carry the torch for, you know, is in most cases shut out of that. You know, shares for the major brokerage firms that they have are allotted. You know, go to the hedge funds, the favored clients, the pension funds, and the people that butter their bread. Can the individual investor participate fully at Fantex? Well, that we are geared toward totally for the individual investor. I mean, institutional investors are welcome to participate Um but really, uh, our, our prime audience is the individual investor. Um, and we think that's a unique aspect of what we're doing is allowing uh, the individual investor to participate in these uh, initial public offerings. And as you point out, normally uh, your normal average individual investor does not have access to those types of shares. So we've already closed the Vernon Davis offering, and that's trading in the secondary market. And our goal is to have a steady stream of IPOs for the individual investor, our current one, um, which we actually stopped taking reservations for on Thursday, um, is the Fantex EJ manual offering. Buck, from the player's perspective, what's the main benefit here? In the case of the Vernon Davis IPO, uh, he did receive the $4 million up front. Is it simply taking that guaranteed up front uh, lump sum in case something goes wrong down the road, you know, injuries, poor performance, whatever the case may be? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, obviously it's a benefit. Money sooner is always better. Uh, he still owns 90% of his brand income, so uh, motivated to continue to generate uh, income. But really the, the main reason is uh, at the end of the day they see this as an opportunity uh, to add advocates on their team, if you will, because now if there's a financial interest linked to their, their success, you have people motivated to help you achieve your success. So it's as much about increasing the power of their team to go out and achieve their goals as, as it is getting money sooner. Buck, I have a question regarding the accounting. You know, I, I want to invest in my the future earnings of my favorite player in the NFL, and that, that, that player decides to participate in an IPO with Fantex. Who does the accounting? Is that on a, a trust-me basis? Is there a third-party firm? How do I know as an investor that uh, everything's on the up and up? So uh, we, Fantex, have audit rights on the books of the athlete to make sure that we're being paid what we're owed. And uh, at the same time, we, Fantex, are audited by Deloitte and Touche. So you do have a big six accounting firm looking over your shoulder as well. Oh, yeah. Yep, we sure do. We're visiting with Buck French, CEO and co-founder of Fantex. Uh, Buck, we always like to take a full 360-degree view of any investments we discuss on this show. And so I do want to talk about some of the potential risks with these securities. And I guess when it comes to athletes, the most pressing concern would probably have to be injury. We know NFL players can battle all sorts of injuries throughout the season. How might that impact the value of the stock? And then what sort of disclosure requirements are there for players to notify Fantex or investors of any injuries? We know the NFL can be pretty tight-lipped when it comes to this area. Sure. So uh, injury is certainly a risk uh, in this investment. And, you know, risk and reward are what walk hand-in-hand in, hand in life. So you have to look at what is the, what is the return profile uh, for an investment given the risks associated with it. So uh, catastrophic injury career-ending Joe Theismann and Lawrence Taylor hit some ends of his career at that moment. It is obviously can happen, but it's not the common. What really is the the wear and tear associated with playing in the NFL would shorten a career length than it otherwise could be. 
Um, so we do detailed analysis. Um, we looked at 19, <clears throat> 212 tight ends between 1990 and 2012 that were drafted and retired uh, in order to come up with uh, a regression analysis to help us predict how long Vernon Davis's potential to play is. We estimated it was 14 years. Um, and then uh, off of those cash flows, you look at the discount rates we apply to it. And when the weighted average discount rate in Vernon's case is 11.4%, and we look at uh, a triple C rated junk bond uh, yielding at 8 to 8.5% with a 27.5% first year default rate, we kind of felt that from acquiring that cash flow streams, uh, it was a, we were being fairly compensated for the rest. Okay, the other potential risk that I could see, we talked about how if you buy Vernon Davis stock, you're effectively purchasing a portion of his future brand income. Uh, now, we know athletes can make a lot of revenue off the field. I mentioned things like autograph signings, public uh, speaking appearances earlier. But how does an investor know they're getting a piece of all those revenue streams or earning streams? You, you mentioned Deloitte and Touche is auditing or, or has audit rights, but, but how does an investor, how can they feel comfortable I guess that Vernon Davis is reporting everything that he's earning that's associated with his brand. Correct. So we uh, work with their financial team, and we have a system put in place in which they report. And uh, it's not Deloitte that audits the, 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 the payment stream. It's Fantex, and then Deloitte would audit Fantex's uh, processes and what we're doing. So uh, we absolutely uh, have a team in place that's uh, experienced. Uh, my fellow co-founder, our CFO, who's responsible for this stuff, uh, he's been a public CFO of four different companies, uh, companies like Borland, Smart Modular, um, big big real businesses. So we're experienced at this, and uh, we have processes in place for us to ensure that we're receiving the cash flow streams in which we purchased. What about insider trading? In this case, is it possible for Vernon Davis to perhaps tell all, all of his buddies that he just inked a big deal and let them pile into the security before it goes up? So, uh, you know, we, we all uh, fall under insider trading laws. Uh, you know, whether you're Vernon Davis uh, with a security out there that's linked to your cash flow streams or Martha Stewart who bought, you know, uh, stock from a friend. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're all governed by those laws, and uh, Vernon's been briefed on that. And I don't think he's going to take... Uh, the risk uh, of getting into criminal trouble to help his buddies make a few bucks. Buck, I know you're at Fantex is only in the first inning of a very, very, very long game, but I wanted to have you speculate perhaps on the future. You know, as Nate and I were talking about Fantex, what you're really doing, in a sense, and correct me if I'm wrong, is helping athletes monetize themselves, their future earnings today. And you know the the next logical step for me now that you've built out the infrastructure, the legal, you know, all the legalese and all the the, the steps that have to be in place, could your concept be extended to entertainers or trusts or the estates of deceased people? How far can this concept go? Uh, we absolutely uh, believe it can ex- extend beyond just sports, uh, let alone internationally in sports. But as you mentioned, entertainment, music. Um, you know, we all have brands. Brands don't mean you're uh, Coca-Cola. Brands could very well, we each all have an audience. Uh, the average person has 130 social media followers. That's their audience. And so um, how far this goes, uh, you know, who knows? Uh, our goal is to help build uh, a diversified audience for the brands that we work with because a diversified audience is a sustainable one. And uh, all of the ones that you mentioned certainly would fit into that bucket. Buck, you mentioned E.J. Manuel, the, the quarterback for the Bills. Uh, reservations are currently being taken for shares, uh, to buy shares of E.J. Manuel. Are there any other athletes uh, that are currently in the hopper? Uh, so we filed a registration statement uh, to take the brand of uh, Mohamed Sanu, uh, a wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, he's currently the, the next uh uh, for him that we're working with who's in the queue. But just a fascinating concept. We certainly appreciate you joining us this morning. No, appreciate you guys. Uh, appreciate you having me. That was Buck French, CEO and co-founder of Fantex. And you can learn more about Fantex and the Vernon Davis tracking stock by visiting Fantex.com. That's F-A-N-T-E-X.com. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll have our weekly market update. This is the ETF Store Show on ESPN 1510. 
Looking to ship freight but not sure how? Choose AOK Freight to be your single source for all your shipping needs and we'll take care of all the work for you. We offer the balance of budget friendly prices, season account managers, and trusted trucking options with leading technology. With more than 20 years of experience in the freight shipping industry and having moved over $1 billion in freight, we know the importance of providing competitive rates and dependable services for truckload, LTL, and intermodal freight services for all industries. If you are a company looking to save on your shipping expense without giving up dependability, let us be your personal shipping assistant. Call us now at 816-301-6226 or find us on the web at www.aokfreight.com. While it's not often talked about, the fact is that many Americans struggle to manage their finances. It's no wonder, since most people are never taught the basic personal finance skills they need to be successful. We can do better. Imagine an entire generation that makes sound financial decisions. The Missouri Council on Economic Education is a nonprofit organization in our community that believes this is possible. They are already working with local schools to teach economics and personal finance, but they need your help. To learn more or to get involved, visit moeconomics.org. That's moeconomics.org. When refinancing a mortgage, all of the numbers can become confusing. With First Mortgage Solutions, you only need to remember two, 500, and zero. $500 is the amount our average customer saves every month after refinancing. And zero is the number of loans we've ever done that have ended up in default. At First Mortgage Solutions, business is based on dollars and cents. Saving you dollars with loans that make sense. For more information, call 816-778-7000 or apply online at firstmortgagekc.com. NMLS number 244476. Is your investment portfolio on track to meet your retirement goals? Unfortunately, most people can't answer that question. In fact, many people haven't done any retirement planning at all. Hi, I'm Nate Geraci with the ETF Store, an investment advisor located right here in Kansas City. Let us help you build a retirement plan and work to achieve your financial goals. Call us today at 816-363-3837 or visit us online at ETFstore.com. And don't forget to tune in to the ETF Store Show every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on ESPN 1510. Want a more beautiful, livable home? Talk to Schlegel Design Remodel. No one offers more ways to add value to your home while saving you money. I'm Jake Schlegel. We have services for every need, like our popular one-week bath and express custom kitchen remodels, completed in a lot less time for a lot less money. We also offer professional handyman services for chores around your home. Whatever your needs, call Schlegel Design Remodel, 816-361-9669, or go to remodelagain.com today. Looking for a great excuse to enjoy a Friday afternoon on the golf course? Join us for the annual Bushnell Charity Golf Tournament, benefiting United Way of Greater Kansas City. Bushnell is a leader in the golf and outdoor industry, so rest assured that our golf tournament is done to perfection. Join us on September 19th at St. Andrew's Golf Course, located in Overland Park. To learn more or register, visit bushnellgolf.com slash tournament. Let's play. There's never a bad time to see your dentist. So if you haven't been for a while or if one of your teeth is actually starting to hurt, it's always easier to fix it before it gets worse. We aren't anti-dentites like the Seinfeld episode. So give Dr. Kevin or Matt Cummings a call at 816-246-1003 or check us out on our website, www.cummingsdentistry.com. Remember, floss the ones you want to keep and mention this ad and get a 10% discount on your first visit. Welcome back to the ETF Store Show on ESPN 1510. Now it's time for our weekly market update. And now it's time for this week's market update. Tune in every week as the ETF Store brings you the information you need to know on the financial markets. A somewhat rocky week for stocks last week. The Spider S&P 500 ETF was down over three quarters of a percent. The Vanguard Developed Markets ETF was down nearly two and a half percent. But the Schwab Emerging Markets Equity ETF was up slightly, about 10 basis points. Bonds were up big last week on the flight to safety. The iShare 7-10 to year Treasury Bond ETF was up well over 1%. And then finally, the iShares Gold Trust was up about 1.5%. And the Rogers International Commodity ETN was down over 3% for the week. And I want to spend just a few minutes this week talking about the news from last Thursday regarding Portugal's banking system. And I thought the way this played out in the markets at the end of the week was another classic investing lesson. 
So before U.S. stocks opened last Thursday, there was news that Portugal's largest bank had some significant financial issues. And that led investors to speculate that Portugal as a country had some issues, which then led investors to speculate that Europe as a whole had some issues. And, of course, that filtered over into the United States. And right at the open on Thursday, U.S. stocks were down big on this news. But here's what happened. From their low point on Thursday morning, the S&P 500 stocks proceeded to go up about three-quarters of a percent by the end of the market close on Friday. Jason, my point here is that if you had turned on CNBC last Thursday morning, you might have thought that the world was coming to an end. My sense is that because the stock market has continued to run, investors are getting a little nervous and seem to be looking for any reason to sell right now. We talked about this last week with all the bubble talk that's out there. It's it's called headline risk. You know, take a step back, you know, fear sells newspapers and draws uh, viewers to television shows. So, you know, you have one bank, and albeit a larger bank in Portugal, which doesn't have an enormous presence in the world economy. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, in discussing this with my clients, you know, I asked them, when you woke up on Thursday or Friday, did you brush your teeth, have breakfast, and get to work? You probably did. And I asked them, you know, did you not buy your Starbucks coffee on the way to work because there was a collapse, potentially, of a bank that, you know, might be insolvent? And Of course not. You know, it comes down to the fact that there will always be future headlines that are disturbing. Some good, some bad. They come, they go. You need a financial plan, an investment strategy that supersedes the headlines of the day, one that matches your situation and your time frame. And let me give you a couple examples. You know, in light of what we heard about happening, potentially happening in Portugal, if you have a small child with 10, 15 years to college, does this matter at all? It, of course not. Tear up the business section. Get on with your day. It's meaningless. On the other hand, you know, Nate, this weekend I had a chance to, to spend some time with my mother-in-law, and she's in her 80s. And she says, Jason, I don't buy any green bananas anymore. <laughs> my time frame <laughs> is very, very short. And so for her, she's already out of harm's way. Her plan has already taken her where she needs to go, so that headline risk doesn't matter. So it's not about what you read. It's about how you react previously to that yeah and you know it gets back into it's not that you shouldn't pay attention to what's going on you bet there's a reason why smart money and investors had some sort of reaction to this portugal bank uh, showing that they had some financial uh, irreal sorry uh, financial issues we'll stick with that but you you know it's interesting because since 2009 the market has climbed this wall of uh, worry even though it's up approaching 200 percent now all the way up investors have questioned the rally and the more the market has gone up It seems the more investors have questioned it. So when you get a little piece of news like a bank in Portugal having some issues, it seems like the market just uses it as an excuse to sell. Think back to the Cyprus banking issue back in February. We've had these sort of speed bumps all along the way since 2009. And I've talked about this quite a bit, but it's just very interesting to me that instead of the normal euphoria you might see with a market up close to 200 percent, there's much more skittishness in the markets, and investors are highly suspect right now. Investors are climbing the wall of worry right now. And really, there's two reasons why for the past oh, 12 to 18 months, there's been a, 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 a speculation that perhaps we're in bubble territory, really for two reasons. You know, we've been in a low interest rate environment for a long time, since the great collapse of 2008, 2009. And when money is essentially free... People like to borrow it because it doesn't cost very much. And so those dollars are flowing to numerous assets from real estate to stocks and bonds. Um, you know, so people presume that part of the reason for the elevated level of stocks is that low, is that money. The other component though, and this isn't talked about quite as much in the press, are corporate profit margins. You know, there's an ebb and flow to our economy, to the world economy, certainly a business cycle. And corporate profits throughout time will be high, will be medium, will be low. And, you know, that's cyclical. Those things change and come and go. Right now, we have elevated profit margins. So when you combine the two, you have that wall of worry. You've got potentially rising interest rates. You've got potentially a reversion of the mean of corporate profit margins. What will that mean to the market? That's what's creating this wall of worry. Jason, this gets back in, though, to your point and that you need to have a plan and a a disciplined plan. And I I actually wrote a blog last week where I talked about how the four most dangerous words in investing, Sir uh, John Templeton had indicated, were this time it's different. 
And I suggested that the four most prosperous words in investing are diversification, discipline, and low cost. And the point is, you're going to have these headline risks at any point in time. They're never going to go away. They're going to change. The headlines are going to change. The market's going to ebb and flow. But you have to make sure for your specific situation that you have a plan in place and that you have a diversified portfolio and that you're minimizing investment costs. And if you have that in place, what you'll find is that over time, you're not going to need to react to these ebb and flows, these these headline risks that pop up. Yeah, the headlines come and go, but the events don't. You know, next week it'll be a tsunami somewhere. You know, right now it's the the conflict in the Gaza Strip, you know, with Israel. Um, you know, what what did we just what, what was the news focused on for the last six months? Well, this Ukraine conflict that's still ongoing. You know, the next conflict, war, tornado, tsunami is coming. We all know that. So again, back to the plan. Your plan should you should have an understanding that my plan addresses those short term headline risk issues. In the perfect example, you hit the nail on the head with this, Jason. If you're, let's say, a younger investor, perhaps you're in your 30s. Quite frankly, you shouldn't be all that concerned if there's some sort of event that drives the market down fairly significantly, because history has shown that your ability to time that is going to be poor. Nate, Nate, in your 30s, that's not only not really a big deal, that's a buying opportunity. Absolutely. And now if you're closer to retirement or you're in retirement, well, perhaps obviously you don't want to have a significant drawdown on your assets and maybe you need to be uh, paying more attention to that. But that gets back into having the right portfolio in place. Make sure that your risk in your portfolio uh, makes sense for your situation. It does. You know, I I think, too, if you're in a position where a one or two percent decrease in the market impacts you in a substantial way, you really need to reevaluate your plan. You know, that that's a situation. If you find yourself losing sleep, let's put together a plan that causes you to sleep well. Point is, if you turn on CNBC, Bloomberg, any of these other financial media networks, certainly enjoy the programming. And perhaps you're going to learn something along the way. But make sure that you don't overreact to those headlines as it relates to your investment portfolio. Let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll spotlight an ETF that earlier this year was called the most innovative ETF. This is the ETF Store Show on ESPN 1510. Will you profit from rising food prices? Bulk Food International. Do you want a tangible asset besides gold or silver? Bulk Food International. Would you like to own an investment that will be valuable 10, 20, 30 years from now? Bulk Food International. With Bulk Food International, you can own a variety of food products that will be viable and valuable for years to come. Bulk Food International will store your products for you or deliver to your location. Best of all, you can use your IRA or 401k funds to make your purchase. Bulk Food International, 816-888-8290. Investing in your future. Do you want more exposure locally and nationally for you or your company? Do you want to build your brand and reach more potential customers? Then you need j Media. j Media is a full-scale consulting firm that can help you with all your media relations, PR, and public affairs efforts. J Girl Media can also help your business with any marketing, mobile app development, digital media, SEO, or content marketing needs. Grow your brand in an affordable way. Check out jgrowmedia.com today. Do stains in your carpet keep coming back and now you're stressing over the high cost to replace it? Then you need to call Zero Res. Their carpet cleaning process does not use soaps or toxic chemicals, which all leave behind residues that attract more dirt immediately. This zero residue technology will not only have your carpets looking great, it also extends the life of your carpet. Check them out online at zeroreskc.com or call 816-425-3655 and schedule your cleaning today. It's a fact that most any day can be a special day for someone. A birthday, an engagement, an anniversary, a promotion, or an I love you day. It's also a fact that Lichtenberg's Fine Jewelry offers hundreds of ways to say love or thanks or congrats or I'm so happy you're in my life. So when you want to make your special day extra special, think Lichtenberg's Fine Jewelry, 131st and State Line, 816-941-2221. 
If you, a family member, or maybe someone you know have been the victim of someone else's negligence, whether due to a motor vehicle collision, an accident at work, a slip and fall, or a product defect, you may be entitled to compensation under the law. The law firm of Van Zanten and Onick is exclusively dedicated to representing victims of negligence in Kansas and Missouri. Please call 816-479-0404 today for a free consultation. Again, 816-479-0404. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Has it been a while since you or your financial advisor reviewed the investments in your portfolio? With today's ever-changing global economy, it's become more critical than ever to make sure your portfolio is on track. Whether you're managing your own investments or using an advisor, it never hurts to get a second opinion. At the ETF store, we provide free consultations on your portfolio. We'll highlight the strengths and weaknesses and tell you exactly what you're paying for your investments. This is absolutely free. There's no obligation. Just give us a call at 816-363-3837 or click on the free consultation button at ETFstore.com. Welcome back to the ETF Store Show on ESPN 1510. Don't forget that every month we select one question sent in by a listener and featured on the show. You can send us questions on anything investing or ETF related. Just go to ETFstore.com and click on the Ask the Host button, or you can send us questions through Twitter. If we select your question, as I mentioned, we will feature it on the show, and you'll receive your choice of a $50 gift card to either Bella Napoli, the Italian restaurant down in Brookside, or Starbucks, so be sure to send us in your questions. Now it's time for our ETF Spotlight. It's time for the ETF Spotlight, where each week the ETF store highlights one exchange-traded fund. There are over 1,500 ETFs available to invest in. The ETF store sorts through them so you don't have to. We've had a theme of innovation on the show today when you think about what Fantex is doing So I thought for our spotlight today, we should look at a particularly innovative ETF. The ETF we're spotlighting is the DBX Trackers Harvest CSI 300 China A Shares Fund. That's a mouthful. The ticker on that is ASHR. Earlier this year, our good friends over at ETF.com actually selected ASHR as their most groundbreaking new ETF from 2013. And this also won Most Innovative ETF at the 10th Annual Global ETF Awards held back in April. And the reason this ETF has won these awards is because it's the first ETF that allows investors to invest directly in what are called China A shares. These are shares of companies based in mainland China. They're only available through Chinese stock exchanges in Shanghai and Shenzhen, and they're priced in the Chinese currency, the renminbi. A shares are typically only accessible to mainland Chinese citizens. Most foreign investors must get access to Chinese stocks through different share classes available on other exchanges, such as Hong Kong or even in New York. But many of the A shares companies aren't even available at all on these exchanges. And it's because of that the A shares are really considered more of a direct play on China. And through a partnership with Harvest Global Investments, this DBX Trackers ETF is able to get access to the A shares through what's called a Qualified Foreign Institutional Investor Program. ASHR currently holds nearly 300 Chinese companies through the A shares, and the expense ratio or fund fee for the CTF is 0.82%. Boy, Jason, certainly an interesting ETF, very innovative. You bet. You know, China is an interesting country. You know, in the last hundred years, it's gone from, you know, not necessarily on the map to the second, the world's second largest economy. But they operate differently than the United States. They have a different regulatory environment. They are, in a sense, a state-sponsored capitalism. So they have many aspects that we do in terms of investing. But from a state standpoint, you know, they put some pretty hard and fast regulations on what they will and what they won't allow. And in the past, what makes this ETF interesting is that if you wanted exposure, you wanted to participate in the growth of China's economy, you had to do it through different share classes, typically Hong Kong. That's normally where these were traded. And they weren't necessarily the share, the actual shares of the companies, the A shares themselves. They were tracking stocks or derivatives. So it wasn't a pure play. It was, it was the best we could do, but it wasn't a pure play. What this particular ETF has done has allowed international citizens, so no, not just Chinese nationals, but 
But, you know, in our country, for example, access to A shares, which was previously simply not available. Well, I think that's one of the key points, because you, you mentioned the other exchanges, Hong Kong. And a lot of the, a lot of these cases with these Chinese companies, you couldn't even access the A shares of these companies uh, or, or these companies themselves on those exchanges. Uh, these A shares can offer access to companies you can't invest in elsewhere. And some of these are among the fastest growing companies in the world. And, and you hit on this, Jason. China is now the world's second largest economy behind the United States and certainly one of the fastest growing economies. And I should note the total China A shares market is the second largest in the world behind the New York Stock Exchange. So here again, when you talk about ETFs, and we started out the show with this, Jason, ETFs allow you to invest in asset classes that were previously inaccessible. And I think that's the reason when you look at our good friends at ETF.com selecting this ETF as the most groundbreaking ETF and, and this ETF winning most innovative ETF at the 10th Annual Awards. The, the reason is because of this sort of innovation that we're seeing. You know, China's moved from really a command and control economy to this state-sponsored capitalism. And with that comes capital controls. You know, you can't just go buy whatever you want in China, even as a Chinese citizen. You can't move and live wherever it is you want to live just because you want to, like we can here. So this relaxation of controls for these organizations that can come in, put together a diversified portfolio of A shares that weren't previously previously available, does have a lot of appeal. And you may say, well, why would I want to own an ETF like this? Well, it gets back into, quite frankly, our last segment when we were talking about headline risk and, and how to combat that and building a diversified portfolio. Uh, an ETF like this could potentially offer some diversification in your portfolio. If you look at the A shares, historically, they've had a low correlation with other markets. And when you're building a portfolio, what you want to do is you want to have a wide range of investments that react differently to different market conditions. So something like the A shares uh, could certainly react different than U.S. stocks or even other developed international stocks. And that's a reason why you may want to consider owning something like this ETF in the portfolio. Uh, but again, Jason, we have just a few minutes left here. I, I do want to go back. We've had this theme of innovation running throughout the show. I thought uh, Buck French from Fantex uh, what a what a fascinating concept. What an interesting interview. And, of course, we're sports fans here at the ETF store. Uh, obviously, we're passionate about investing, but I would say sports runs a, a close second. And, and just learning about a security like this, I thought was just really interesting that here you can invest in a, a, the, the future income of professional athletes. And I really did see some very strong parallels between what Fantex is doing and what ETFs are doing, and that you look at the ETF like the one we just spotlighted, that you can now access something that was previously unavailable. And so, you know, again, it's innovation and investing. Yeah, he, he, the, the word we were using, and this is, a, this is a fancy economic term, is this is pretty cool. This is a pretty neat innovation. You know, he made a couple of points that I thought, were helpful for people who are, you know, might be considering this kind of alternative. Number one, the IPOs are accessible. You know, they, they trade. That's an important point. Y you know, the, the little guy that we, that we carry the torch for sometimes doesn't get to participate there. So it's neat to see an opportunity where someone can jump right in with every other investor. Yeah. And, and real quick there, what we're talking about, go back to the Facebook IPO or the Twitter IPO. What happens is the institutional investors are the ones who are getting access to those shares. By the time the average retail investor gets a hold of those shares, in a lot of cases, they've already gone up so significantly uh, that, you know, the quick money's been made. And so the average investor can't get a hold of those shares until after the stocks run up significantly. Well, well here, every investor can go to Fantex.com and participate. Uh, in this case, the next IPO they have is on EJ Manual uh, tracking stock. So, uh, again, I think that's an important point in terms of the IPO being readily available to all investors. You know, Nate, another point he made, you know, first thing when you and I were talking about this, number one, this is neat. Number two, as an investment advisor, hey, what can go wrong? I need to know my downside. So it was interesting to hear Buck talk about the accounting process. How do the dollars flow and who's watching over this? Well, you know, they have, a, of course, an invested, uh, vested interest to make sure that everything is on the up and up. And that's real security knowing there's a major accounting firm looking over everything. Yeah, because when you think about this, professional athletes, they do earn a lot of different revenue streams, whether it's endorsements, off the field appearances. Uh, obviously, they have their NFL contract once they retire. I, I mentioned a buck. Well, you know, what if they open a restaurant? Uh, so 
you want to be comfortable as an investor that you're going to have a piece of those future uh, income streams. And I thought he did a pretty good job of explaining how the accounting works on that. Yeah, it was interesting. I think the third item that stands out to me in terms of the innovation, and this hits home with, with our firm and what we do, and that's the potential for non-correlation. You know, will the future income of Vernon Davis and dozens of other athletes like him track with the United States economy? Or will it track lockstep with the Chinese economy? We know we talked about this ETF. You know, there's the potential that this could be this could zig when other things zag, giving your portfolio more stability. And who doesn't want that? Well, Jason, we will have to leave it there as we are out of time for today's show. I do want to thank Buck French from Fantex for joining us today. And as a reminder, you can listen to the ETF Store show for free by going to ETFstore.com, Apple iTunes, or also Stitcher Radio. And I should note that through any of those, you can very easily listen to our show from any mobile device or tablet. Just use the podcast app if you have an iPhone or iPad. Or if you're on Android, you can download, download the Stitcher Radio app. Also, check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You can stay up to date on all the latest from both the ETF Store and the ETF Store Show. Thanks again for joining us this morning, and be sure to tune in next Tuesday at 9 a.m. We'll be joined by Bruno DeLama, CEO of one of the fastest-growing ETF providers, GlobalX. Until then, have a great week, everyone. 